Hello, this is Nancy Briggs. I am your instructor for Art 115. This is the second survey of art history. It goes from the late Gothic age, which is this first slide, uh, through all the way through contemporary art. Um, so that's a big journey. We're going to start in the 1400s and end up till almost before the present day. So this is the journey we're going to take. And as you can see visually from the same subject, mothers and children, that visually things are going to start to really change and things change very rapidly in this time period and often um, as does the world. So we're going to look at all the issues that surround these things and why things change so much. Um, you can see we're starting from a time where things are spiritual and the story associated with paintings seems to be the more important thing. And then we're going to see the handling of materials to change and different materials introduced like photography, which in my mind changes art drastically and um, the world as well. And cubism here where art will become something other than just showing an image. It will become something to do with the artist and we'll see that unfold as we go and we go beyond this slide is from the 1930s so we'll go beyond that into contemporary art and things were really going to look um, different that way so you can um, reach me by email that's the first point of contact i don't set um, set office hours i'm a full-time remote worker so i'm you know, usually at my desk during the day and sometimes in the evening. So if you email me, I will get it pretty quickly and I'll get back to you. And if I can't answer any question through email, then we can definitely have a phone call or meet at a, you know, a Google meet or whatever we need to do. If I need to show you my screen or I can take a little video of, of how to, um, you know, help you as well. So um, you just let me know, please do reach out if you have any questions about, uh, anything in the course. I am here to help. So the course, uh, you can read the syllabus and it talks all about this, but I like to sort of emphasize, you know, some very important things we want to keep in mind as we go through the course. Um, and that is uh, what we're really going to examine is the how and why our objects came to be um, and the political and commercial powers that sort of go into these things and personal we'll get to that as well um, and then mostly we'll look at this idea of influence of art from one culture or time period to another for instance um, we start with the late gothic which sort of ignores all things greco-roman if you took art art uh, 114 you know the greeks are very very important but you know spoiler alert, they will become very, very important in the Renaissance, and then they will still have a stronghold in art history up until the 1700s. So we'll look at, you know, this, this unfolding of influence from one time period to another. Uh, and we'll be able to trace this, um, this influence, we'll know that certain artists worked with or saw certain artists, uh, lots of artists are going to go to Italy and see what the Renaissance artists have done and will be directly influenced by them, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years later. So that is an important part of the history part. Um, but the how and why is also what we're going to look at. Is it personal? Is it political? Is it cultural, spiritual? Why are these things made? And what did they mean to the people who made them, the individual artists or how did it reflect the time period the artist lived in? I run the course as a once a week um, meeting, which means you only, I take attendance once uh, a week, and that is on Mondays because everything for the week is due on Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. The modules are open on Fridays, or at least uh, I believe three are open now, maybe four. Um, but I do uh, want to stress you can work ahead on the readings and the quizzes. Um, don't get too far ahead, though. I would say go up to the test. The test is not open till the test week for the integrity of the test. I don't leave it open for four weeks. Um, so uh, you, just for recall, uh, maybe you don't want to, you know, you, you can't go beyond the, the test. So um, I would say 
just li limit the, your chunks of working ahead to like four weeks or so if, if that's what you want to do. You don't have to work ahead. Um, and then also pay attention to what assignments go with what readings. Don't jump ahead and do a discussion that asks you to read chapter um, 20 when um, you haven't done it yet just to get it out of the way. It's, it needs to reflect what you've been reading. So each week you're going to have chapter reading. Sometimes you have one or two chapters and each chapter has two quizzes. Uh, they have an image quiz and then um, an information quiz. There's also some weeks weekly assignments. Some of them are creative or written. A lot of times you get choices if you don't want to make something, if you're like don't have materials or you're not, you know, you're not feeling creative. Um, you don't have to do that. There's always a writing um, choice. So um, don't drop the course now that I said you have to make something. You don't have to make anything. But if you're an art major, and lots of you are, then please feel free to go to your strengths. All right, so all of this will be open. That is after taking the entry verification test. Uh, that is at the beginning of the course. That is set by the college. I do not um, grade it. It's auto graded, and I do not count it as part of your grade. It's on our grade book, but that's only because um, it, that's for attendance reasons and I can get in touch with anybody who hasn't taken it. That that column in the grade book will be hidden after the, everybody's taken the entry or the census is over and the 19th. Um, so don't worry about the grade. As long as you get a 70 or above, you may go ahead and move on. You don't have to, I can see that students take like, you know, however, it's, it's an unlimited attempts I see students get like an 80 and then they keep attempting for like 10 times. I feel you're just wasting your time at that point, but that's up to you. If you want to see a hundred that's going to be hidden, please feel free, but you do have to take the test. All right. So navigating the course in Blackboard, I'm going to show you our uh, course here. When you log in, you'll see the banner. This is Corbet's funeral at Arnans. We'll get to that. Um, you will see, uh, the verification test. Uh, if you're watching this video, then um, you uh, will see that next. You'll see the test and other things, but you won't be able to do anything until you take the test. Everything's locked. So before you email me and say, I can't take quiz one or, or quiz chapter 14, it means that you have not taken the test and gotten at least a 70. It Everything's released after you take this test. Um, I apologize if you've taken other online courses and this is just a, a repeat and I know it is the same test as other classes. So the good news is you should be able to take it easily, but you know, we're just going to deal with it. I didn't design that test or anything to do with it. I just do what I'm told. All right. So uh, I just clicked this thing. I do get emails about this once in a while. If this is your new, if you're new to Blackboard, there's a little arrow here and then you can see all the tabs that you will need for my class. So there's the entry verification. It will be here on the, the front page, but you can click on that. Announcements, this is the announcement page. So um, when you log in, you will see my video, my welcome video here. Um, these things, the course syllabus and information and all that are, um, they are here. But uh, I've put them all in our week one. Whoops, it's not there. It's in our week one module, and I'll show you that. Um, you, you won't see a lot of these because this is the instructor view. Everything's hidden from your course till you do the test, so I can't show you the student view. But I do want to show you this. The modules is where you're going to find everything. And as I said in the other slide, everything is run by the modules. So you can see here, um, I have up to week four already loaded. And that will be our first um, exam. So um, you have, you know, it's all laid out for you. Hopefully you can find it easily. And please um, don't hesitate to say, hey, that was hidden or I can't find it. Or, because, you know, I'm a human and uh, I don't mind getting a little help if, if I haven't clicked the right button or something, you know, you can see um, I've put work into it, but you know, maybe I haven't gotten everything done. All right. So the modules, this is just the getting started. This isn't week one. This is week one down here. It gives you the information for the week. A lot of times it gives you the objectives, like what you should be learning, what you're expected to learn, and then it gives you what you should be doing. So this is what you're going to do, the expectations, and a lot of this you'll just get from this video. 
um, and then you can read through all these other things. So that's what you're going to do and what to expect. And then you click on the um, link and then the, th the actual assignments are there. Um, so I just kind of went over what the course is about and you can read through all this. I'm not going to make a five hour video so I can go over everything, but I do want to go over a couple things um, here on our uh, syllabus. I should have opened that before, sorry. All right, so you can read through the syllabus. Um, I just want to stress this because we are, I run it as a one week, a once a week attendance course, and we are uh, seated, so our, we're um, online, but it's the same as seated. Um, you are allowed, and I hate to term it that way, um, you won't be um, <laughs> penalized for uh, an absence, um, but uh, non-consecutive absences uh, after two on the third one, so if they're not in a row, you will be withdrawn from the course. If they are consecutive, like you've been missing for two weeks, on the second, so say you missed one week and that Sunday, I see you're not there, that Monday you get an absence. The next Sunday or the next Monday, I go to take attendance and you still have not, you're not there. And by that, I mean, you haven't done any assignments. Then you will be disenrolled. All right, so two non-consecutive, then the third one, you will be um, disenrolled. And that's a lot of time. We're only 12 weeks and that's three weeks. So, you know, that's, that's a high percentage of time that you will be gone from the class. Frankly, you won't be doing well. You would have missed too many things. So, um, I don't recommend missing anything. Um, and I will say that as long as you do something that earns a grade that week, so say you um, take the quizzes, but you didn't do the assignment, the written assignment, that will still be a present. I'm not encouraging you to skip assignments. I want you to do everything. It's designed for you to learn the most that way, but um, I won't punish you, I guess, by attendance if you've done some things and not others, as long as it's a grade. If you've logged in, that's not enough. You need to have turned in something that I see on the Blackboard gradebook, because that's how I take attendance. I just go right down the columns of the things due, and I see who did what. And if you did none of those things for the week, then you are absent. All right, so get in touch if you have questions about that, um, and I will be glad to uh, clarify or if we're having issues with, um, you know, time management, maybe I can help you with that too. All right, so evaluation, MindTap are the chapter images and quizzes um, are 20%. And I'm going to stress that 20% is one fifth of your grade. And those you can take on limited attempts until you get 100%. So I encourage you to get 100% on the MindTap and one fifth of your grade will already be a 100. Uh, discussion boards are worth 10% and I'll show you those. Uh, chapter tests, we will have um, two chapter tests and we have a midterm and a final and I say comprehensive because there's um, a couple parts to the final, it's not just the exam so you know there's a little bit of a project and whatnot um, so you can um, have you know alternative ways if you're not if you think taking exams isn't your strength, that will just be part of your grade. It won't be the whole grade. And then all of the extra assignments, um, whether it's written or project or whatever your choice is, are 25%. So don't, you know, don't ignore those either. That's a high percentage. All right. So um, try to try to get as much done as possible. All right. Um, Let's see, I think that's all, that's all just college stuff. Late work, uh, no late work will be accepted. Discussions, um, projects and readings are based on that week. So if you're doing them late, I use the pro forma, that just means you're 
you're going through the motions and passing in a piece of paper, well, not a paper, but a form now, right? That's not authentic. If we're in a discussion or if you're doing a project based on the reading and I accept it like, you know, two weeks late, what's the point, right? It's just busy work and I don't have time to grade busy work and I don't give busy work. So the whole course is designed to have an authentic, timely learning experience. Um, and that's why no late work is accepted. Um, the mind tap chapters, again, they're worth 20% of your grade. Those I will not accept late because I am going to drop two of the lowest grades. So if you miss one, you don't need to email me and say, hey, I missed one. That's, I'm sorry, too bad. You're not going to get to make it up. But if you only miss one, it doesn't matter. It, that will be dropped. All right. So um, uh, keep that in mind. And no exam will be allowed a retake or makeup. Uh, you're, you're given a week to take an exam. And you know about week four, there's an exam. I'm telling you right now. And it's on our our um, our pacing guide. So plan your time accordingly. I I'm not sure why sometimes online students they blank it out. They forget. I send many reminders and announcements, and I will remind you personally if you haven't taken the the test yet, and it's almost the deadline. So um, there's no no reason not to take an exam on time. Um, and that goes hand in hand with computer issues. We are an image-based course, and unfortunately, some of the files may be a little bit large. I've tried to manage that as best I can. Uh, if you can log into Blackboard and you see everything, then there's no reason why your computer shouldn't be fast enough for a test. Um, but if you think for whatever reason, you, uh, you know, when you're on your computer's always acting up, I highly recommend that you find another way to take the exams. Go to campus and use the computer labs. If your internet is, you know, spotty at your house like mine, um, then you can, um, you know, go to campus and use the internet there. Uh, it's not an excuse for anything to say that you're, you know, lost your computer, your computer was broken, it, you know, it kicked me off the exam. Please do your best uh, to work around this because it's not fair to the class if I, I make allowances for certain people and nobody else got to make anything else up. So um, please do your best. Um, I'm also going to add the, a caveat here. I know you can do things on your phone and, uh, you know, that's great. Phones are very convenient for many things. They are not convenient to take an image-based exam test or do anything for this course on your phone. So uh, please try not to do that. Okay. Use a laptop or a desktop computer. Uh, even an iPad is better if it's, you know, all updated and, and whatnot. Okay. All right. And then the rest is just stuff you can read through. It's mostly just um, uh, college stuff. All right. So that's our syllabus. Let me go back to our course here. Um, and then you can read through the uh, schedule here. I'm actually uh, I'm going to send that to you before the course begins with my welcome note. But you can see all the deadlines here. Um, boy, that's a short quiz. Usually the pacing guides are two or three pages. Um, so you can see when you're going to um, need to do things. So we have the test, the fourth week, the midterm, the sixth week. That makes sense. That's a 12 week class. And then another test and then the final. All right. So those are the big things in yellow to pay attention to. And these are the topics we're going to cover. And then the chapters that we're going to cover here and then the assignment discussion. And that's where you'll find them on the, um, on the modules. All right. So week one, which, so you'll go through all the getting started. I, I went through a lot of it, but please, you know, go ahead, read the syllabus, read through the pacing guide and just, you know, get familiar with what, what you're going to be doing. Try to make a, you know, a game plan to succeed with the managing your time. Uh, week one, which is this week, um, by Sunday, 917, all of this stuff is due. And this is the stuff you're going to learn. 
All right, so um, you're going to look at all this stuff in this, the getting started thing uh, module. You're going to register for MindTap and read the textbook. That you can do over here is MindTap access and, and registration, but you can also click here is the textbook right on top of the modules as well. Um, I do not manage the registration that goes through our uh, textbook company. There is a, when you go to log in, there's a help number. Those are the people you have to contact for whatever reason. I don't deal with logins and, and any of that. Okay. Um, if there's another issue with, with grades or something, say for some reason your grades aren't um, migrating from MindTap to Blackboard, please let me know because then I have to call the lovely people at MindTap and have conversations with them because that does happen. All right, so uh, what you're going to do, you click on week one and you can see this is, there's your, I have uploaded the chapters, but you do have to register for the book first. Um, you can go through the book to get the chapters, but they're all right here weekly for you, if that's helpful. Um, and I've included extra things. So here's flashcards. Um, sometimes there's videos it's, if that's helpful those are all in your textbook for you to use as well but um uh you can um you know click click through anything you want but this is what you're accounted for accountable all right and this looks odd i just told you the test is week four here's the review sheet here um and i i put this here because I feel this is the way you want to approach the course. These are all of the artists and uh, works of art here in italicized. So these are artist names and we will know artist names and these bold letters titles are the time periods. So this is chapter 14, late Gothic. Uh, we skip to chapter 20. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 are there for you to enjoy and read if you want. You have the textbook, you paid for the all-inclusive, so you have the textbook during the course. You are welcome to read anything you want, but we are going from chapter 14 to the Renaissance because the book is divided. This is really a chapter that's in both one, um, 114 and 115. It's sort of the gateway. And then it goes to other areas of the world in the textbook and then back to um, Europe. So uh, feel free to look at anything you want, um, but uh, we are going to chapter 20. But this sheet here I give you is because this is this will organize what you really need to pay attention to. There are many, many, many artists and works of art in these chapters, and you will read all the chapters, but I'm highly recommending you can uh, edit this, you can see right here. Go ahead and type on this or print it out. If you're on campus, you get free printing at the library and take notes on this. And that's what you can use on the test. You can use notes on the test. All right, what you can't do is Google on the test. And, and that I'll go, when we're starting to take a test, I will um, tell you about that. Um, so this this is how, why I put it on week one. I find that that's the best way to start. So these are the things that you will have to know or be familiar with for the test or at least have notes on. Um, and so that you, so you'll have that. And then each week there is also um, I have slides like a PowerPoint and those slides correlate with a video that I have made a lecture video. I don't claim to be a very entertaining person uh, but um, I feel that I'm the one who made the course uh, content and uh, the curriculum and I uh, make the tests. So there's no reason for you. It doesn't come from MindTap. It comes from um, you know, a more individual thing because MindTap is way too much in a way. So uh, there's video lectures you can watch and take notes on on that form. And then there's also just the slides here for every chapter we're going to do. So that's what I recommend 
um, doing to, to prepare for the test. You'll have the review sheet and then you'll have slides you can look at imagely, image based and there's videos where I explain things maybe uh, more so than the book because you know we're very focused on just a, a few of the people in the chapter. All right. Um, so that's how you're going to find everything. You have the book, you have uh, the chapter slides, the chapter videos, the module, um, and the discussion board is here. Not every week, like the weeks you have tests, you will not have a discussion. You're going to focus on studying. Um, although this is a 12 week class, you will have a chapter uh, after you take the test, but um, you uh, will not have extra work, like an extra written assignment or something. So here I write, you know, before chapter 14, respond to this prompt and you will read what it says and you'll do what it says. Uh, that you do first. Um, you won't be able to see anybody's response until you post already. And then after you post, you wait a minute and then you'll see, I, I don't know if it's any like amount of time, it might be instant. You can see everybody else's posts unless you're the first one, then you'll have to go back. Um, so um, you are going to respond to two other students. This is a little tricky since I only take attendance once a week. Um, I know that you, I'm asking you to read the stuff first and then answer the question. And if you wait till Sunday to do it, then, you know, you probably have a lot of choices. Um, but if you work really early, you'll have to go back and remember. Um, unless everybody's working at 1150 on Sunday night, then then we're going to have a little bit of a problem. So we'll we'll play that by ear, but um, get in touch if that seems to be a problem for you. Um, so you're going to respond to two other posts and it should specifically talk about, you know, what um, the question is. It should be positive and it should add to the discussion. Right. You can say, well, I, I agree and I found this to be true as well. Or lots of students. Right? I also wrote about this thing. And did you know, you know, as if you're talking to somebody in class about this subject and it should be about this subject. OK, it's not a social media platform. It is a um, an academic uh, forum. All right, so get in touch if you're not sure about, you know, what's what's appropriate or not. But I do read those and I grade those. So. Um, you know, keep it professional, please. And even if you disagree with some somebody, we are going to see some controversial things later in in the um, in the course. And I will ask, you know, certain things that you're going to have different opinions. And I hope that everybody can be very um, respectful about um, you know these things. And if somebody you know posts something that you think is inappropriate, uh, then please just let me know. I do read them. So, um, you know, we can, we can talk about that. All right. So I think that's all I need to, uh, show you. So go ahead and, um, jump in. You have to take the entry verification. Um, you should do that right now after this video. Uh, you already know how to navigate this. Uh, you're going to register for the book. And then you have chapter 14 and quizzes to do. Then you're going to do the class discussion uh, and the uh, there's the assignment too. And then you will respond to two other students. All right. So get in touch if you have any questions about any of this. I'm here to help. Thanks.